Hey, what's up, guys? James from Drunkard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us on another adventure. And today we are enjoying a very beautiful day, a very cloudy day up here in the beautiful New Mexico mountains, the Oregon Mountains. And we're going to be doing some camp cooking. You guys know us. We like to eat like kings. So in case you missed last week's video, I highly recommend you check it out. We went on this really epic summer adventure in South Texas, and we hunted a wild boar. Uh, we visited, we hung out in the Nueces River, and we caught a couple of bluegill. So for the bluegill, uh, two of them are decent size for bluegill size, and three of them were quite small, but they swallowed the hook, and I could not remove it in time. So I don't want their deaths to be in vain, so I brought them with me. Uh, we froze them, so right now we're thawing them out, and today we're going to be frying them up, and we're going to be enjoying that. So, uh, some fish that we caught from the river. In the meantime, while that happens, while we get the fire started, I'm just going to have a very brief montage of that adventure. And once again, if you haven't checked out that video, I highly recommend doing so. Probably my favorite video we filmed of 2021. So anyway, hope you're hungry. Let's go ahead and get started. <music> So before we get started, if you want to try out this recipe, let me just show you the ingredients. So first things first, of course, the MVP of this recipe are going to be some fish. So as you can tell, we have five bluegill here. Some of them are pretty small, sadly, but some of them are pretty decent size for bluegill standard. And they're almost fully thawed out. Just a couple more minutes. So yeah, just a couple little small snack size pan fish. And then, of course, since we're going to be breading and frying them, you're going to need a lot of oil. I brought some canola oil, and then I brought some cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. You can use any type of breading you like. If you want to go with panko or zatarans, anything from the store, uh, this is what I had at home. So this is what we're going to be using. Now, while you mix your breading, you can mix it with other spices that you like. You know us. We like spicy food, so we have some blackening, a little bit of lemon pepper, some crushed red pepper, black pepper, garlic powder, or garlic salt, it doesn't really make a difference. And then once they're nice and ready, we're gonna have some butter and hot sauce. And then for the side, we're keeping it very simple today, but for the side, we're also gonna butter some green beans as well.
Okay, so we stoked up the fire. We got it nice and strong. Now, I will admit that when it when it comes to frying, it's much easier to do it at home when you can control your stove, the temperature and all that. But we're out here anyway, so we're going to improvise. Now, right now that the flames are nice and strong, I'm going to place my small cast iron pan on here and let it get hot before I add the oil. Now, I am using a small cast iron uh, once again, the bluegill are very small, so I can cook two at a time and that's all I need. All I need is a small pan. So place this guy right here and let it get hot for a couple of minutes, about three minutes, and then I'm going to go ahead and place my oil. You want to fill it about a little less than half an inch you will want almost all of the fish submerged in the oil Okay, now time to make our batter. Now, I don't have any exact measurements, guys. I'm just just eyeballing it, okay? So, the most important is cornmeal. This is going to take about 60-65% of your mixture. You just want enough where all the fish are going to have enough breading. Okay. Now for some blackening. A little bit of lemon pepper not too much not too much crushed pepper a good amount of black pepper And a good amount of garlic powder. And some people like to do this with a Ziploc bag. I like to do this with a Tupperware. Now, in case it's not enough batter, we'll just improvise as we go along. Okay, so from here, we're going to add the fish. Sometimes you, majority of the times, I, I will admit, you would want to use an egg. Just mix these guys in an egg, and that's going to help the batter stick more. Sadly, we didn't bring any eggs. It just, it's just it going to be too complicated. When, when you're outdoors, you want to kind of keep it, you know, simple enough. Okay, so no need for the egg this time. It'll be just fine. So I have two of them. We're getting there. Like I said earlier, had we had egg, it would have helped keep the batter better on the fish, but we'll just have to improvise. This will do. So this, I would say, is nice and hot. It's been on here for about 15 minutes. Two at a time. About three minutes on each side until they're nice and golden brown and then we'll remove them. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. They're looking nice and golden. Let's flip them around. And another, about another three minutes. Look at the fins, make sure that they're nice and crispy. They're looking nice and uh, crunchy.
Alright folks, so food is ready. It's dinner time. So time to serve ourselves here. A couple of green beans on the side. And then Cuervo, after after we finish shooting, he's gonna serve his side. And then a little bit of hot sauce. Okay, folks, so it is dinner time. Our fish are nice and fried. Uh, there's some butter on here. Look at that. It's going to be so nice and crispy. Uh, just be careful with the bones, but honestly, this is such a uh, crispy fish at this point. It's not going to be much of a problem. Uh, not as much as other creatures like carp, for example. But uh, time to take a taste test. Mm -hmm. The breading... The breading didn't stay the wish I did the way I wish it did, but uh, we didn't bring an egg. But uh, other than that, let me see. I could put this down. I mean, you can just break it apart. Look at that, nice and flaky. So yeah, this guy was a little guy. Let me just get get rid of the spine there, but uh. Yeah, you can fry these, and they're going to be really good. All right, now for this bigger one, let's see if I can just remove the spine, just so we don't have to deal with that. Check it out, you see that? Let's get rid of the spine. You can eat between it to get to that skin. The skin's my favorite part. And check it out just it just removes so easily look at that and then just once again just be careful with a little bit of the bones these aren't once again these aren't as as gnarly as carp or anything like that so they're not going to be too much of a problem but you don't want to get careless of course all right bottoms up oh man it was really good. Really good. Even the fins, the tail fins. All right, let's go ahead and taste a couple of the green beans. We do got to eat veggies at some point in our lives. So once again, cheers, guys. Mm-hmm. 
This makes me wonder, how come we don't eat green beans more often in our recipes? They're so good. And once again, apologies, I'm trying to balance the plate here. Once again, these bluegill are just so soft. Once again, watch out with the bones. But when they're deep fried, you can even eat a lot of the scales. I'm sorry, a lot of the fins. And the meat will remove very easily. So yeah, just be careful, but it is great eating. All right. I'm not going to torture you guys here too much, so let me close this up as we make our conclusion. Guervo and I are going to enjoy our dinner and enjoy this beautiful evening out here. As you can tell, it's just it's just so gorgeous out here, um, and we, we got a little bit of rain coming and going, so we're going to enjoy that. So cheers to everybody watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and comment down below what's your favorite bluegill recipe. And with that being said, guys, thank you for all the views, all the support, all the love and encouragement. We are grateful for all of you out there. We're also grateful to, to these fish that gave their lives to help sustain ours. We do not forget that. As hippie as that may sound, Gorbo and I firmly believe, you know, in honoring our kills and honoring, you know, whether it's a plant or fruit, anything that the earth sustains for us. And uh, I hope, you know, uh, I hope that comes across because we have a great respect to these animals. Uh, with that. With that being said, guys, once again, we're going to eat our dinner. So thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.